So now we can talk about how Python manages and stores these variables in the memory. So first of all, we need to understand what a random access memory is or RAM. If you don't know what that is, it's basically a storage in our computer, which holds the values like the variables we declared here to keep track of the progress we uh, are making in our applications. For instance, when we have Google Chrome open and we have a bunch of tabs open uh, or an, a bunch of other applications, you can notice how your computer might slow down. And that's because it's storing a bunch of values and it keeps track of all the progress you have in your um, during your session. So um, that's what RAM is responsible for. It stores all these instance variables. Um, so the way RAM is designed, at the top end of RAM, we have a stack. And at the bottom, we have the heap. And they're actually going towards each other. So eventually, they'll um, meet at some point. So what are the what are their responsibilities? What's the difference? So heap is responsible for storing all the all our objects and all the values. For instance, string b is going to be stored in the heap. An integer 4 is going to be stored in the heap. A stack on the other end is responsible for holding the references to the objects in the heap. So you would think when we declared this variable student grade, you might think that this variable will hold the actual value um, string b. However, that's not the case. So when we declare this variable student grade, what happens in the memory is our computer allocates memory in the heap for our string b. It stores the string b in the heap. And in the stack, it creates a reference to that object. And our variable student grade actually holds the reference to our object, not the actual object. So a little example with it is, for instance, here, we have a variable s, which uh, holds the value hello. And we have another variable called ss that also holds a value hello. They have the same memory uh, address in the stack. As you can see, it's stored in these like little cells. And they have the same memory address because they're referencing the same object. And in the heap, we're actually storing the value, the string hello. Um, similarly, it works for integers. So for instance, if we have a variable named progress or prog, the memory address is going to be 5000. It's uh, the variable is going to be the reference that's in the stack. And this variable is going to be referencing the value 100 that's going to be stored in the heap. So now I actually want to show you the proof of how this works in our real application. So first of all, let's just comment this out over here. And uh, now let's just create two variables. First one is going to be word one. And let's give it a value programming, it's going to be a string. And then we're going to have a variable word two. And it's also going to have a variable, um, the value of programming. So in Python, there's a function called ID. Um, similar to how type worked, we're just going to say ID and use our object as a parameter. And what this function is going to return is the address of the object in the heap. So let's just go ahead and print it out. So we're going to say print, then inside we're going to say ID, and we're going to print ID of object one. Uh, we're just going to copy and paste here. And here we're going to use the ID of word two. So let's go ahead, save and run this. And as you can see, the address for both objects is exactly the same because it's reference, referencing the same exact object. Um, similarly, if for instance, we set something like Apple here. Now, it would give us a different address. As you can see, the, the beginning is similar, but the end of the address is actually different because it's refer referencing a different object. But if we actually went and um, did this over here, so we can actually um, not only print out the ID, but we can actually compare our objects, whether or not they're the same object. So what we can do is print 
word one is word two. And this is the first time we're actually using, uh, we're actually going to print out a Boolean value. So what this syntax does is it says, okay, is word one the same object as word two? And uh, pay attention here. It's not comparing their addresses, but it's comparing actual objects. So in our case, since these two variables are referencing the same object, this statement should return true. And in fact, let's see how that works. And it did return true. So now we can talk about the mutability of our objects. In Python, there's two types of objects, which are mutable and immutable. Mutable objects is, for instance, a list that has five values, and a list is stored in the memory as one object. If we were to change some of the elements of that list, it would still be the same list object in the memory. However, for our primitive types, they're all immutable. So what that means is, for instance, here we declared a variable word one as programming. If we were um, to change that value to, for instance, coding, then it would actually create a new object and word one would store a new reference. So you, you might think that it would overwrite the old object and just give it a new value. However, this is its own separate object that is already stored in the memory. In this case, it will allocate new space in the heap and store this as a new object. But since word one no longer references programming, what happens to this object? Well, we can see that word two still references this object and we can actually visualize um, how it would look in the memory. So we used to have word one referencing for instance, in this case, it's going to be a string code, not programming, but just as an example. So we have these two variables referencing the same object. So an object has the what's called a reference count. It counts how many variables are referencing that object. If it's more than zero, the object is going to exist in the memory. If the reference count drops to zero, a what's called garbage collector will go around the, uh, the heap and actually deallocate the objects that no longer have references to them. So in our case, what we did is we said, okay, word one is going to reference another object, whatever that may be. So from this point on, where's the eraser? So we're actually just going to do this. So this reference, reference no longer exists. So for our object, um, code, the ref is now one. So what if we were to, um, for instance, reference word two to some other object? Well, in this case, a reference count would go to zero and this reference would no longer exist. So the garbage collector would go around and then deallocate this object from the memory. Now we can look at an example with integers to see how this really works. So I'll go ahead and erase this. So let's uh, create a variable called number and let's set it a value of 39. Okay. So now we created um, the object 39 in our heap. Now this uh, variable stores the reference to that object in the memory. So what if we were to say number equals number plus one. So again, as we might have thought before this lesson, that it would actually be the same object, it would just overwrite it to 40 because 39 plus one is 40. However, that's not the case. 39 no longer has any references to it. And instead, a new object 40 was um, allocated, uh, we allocated the space for an object 40. And now this variable stores a reference to another object. And we, we can actually check this by saying print ID and we're going to say number. And here we're going to do the same, actually the same thing. We're just going to copy paste. So now let's go ahead and run this. And as you can see, in fact, our objects are of different, um, our unique identifiers are different because we actually created a new object. And again, just to visualize how this works in the memory. So when we created a variable number, it has its reference in the stack. 
that leads to our object in the heap. So in our case, it was 39. So then when we um, re-declared number, we defined it a new value where, for instance, it was a new code, 3232. Three, okay? So we said number plus one. So we used this object plus one and store allocated a new space for a new object, which was 40. So then this reference no longer exists and the garbage collector will go ahead and deallocate this object from the memory. So that's it for today's video. Today we covered memory management in Python, how objects are stored in the memory, reference count, garbage collector, and look through some examples of how Python actually executes the code and stores the references to our objects. So in the next video, we're going to talk about conditional if else statements. So I'll see you next time.